Hello, I'm Edwina Besic. Welcome to this video about assistive technologies that can be used to facilitate the participation of students with limited verbal, motor and or cognitive abilities. Today, I will be talking to Gonda Pickel, a professor of this field. Uh, and first of all, Gonda, please describe us briefly. What did you do? What are you still doing on this topic? Well, hello, everyone. Um, by definition, um, I'm a special teacher and a speech uh, language pathologist. And I've spent 30 years of my professional life um, working with children with um, cognitive multiple impairments, motor impairments, and somehow the focus of my field became in the direction of augmentative and alternative communication to work with children with complex communication needs. So that's how I came to dig into the field of assistive technologies. And it will be a pleasure for me to share a little bit with you. That's perfect. Thank you. You brought us a presentation for this video today and I would say let's start. Let's first review what assistive technologies are and you here can see the title of this presentation and now dig in into the topic, Gonda. Please. Thank you, Edlina. Well, um, you already know this definition, what assistive technology is and what it is not. So we do not have to deal any longer with this slide. So let's just move to um, what assistive technology, um, the forms of assistive technology. Assistive technology, or in short AT, it can be augmentative, uh, which means to support an impaired ability like I'm wearing glasses, so my glasses support my somehow limited eyesight. Or a person has a weak voice and will need a microphone to support his or her voice. Or assistive technology can also be detouring or inserting something. But as you know, we would not talk about a surgically inserted piece. Um, typical would be say for a person with dysarthria due to a motor neuro, neuro, neurologic, excuse me, motor speech impairment, um, a voice amplifier would somehow help to increase the intelligibility of a person's speech when, for example, a person has problems to pronounce especially consonants or a person with um, spinal cord injury um, on a high level who would not be able to use his or her hand. And orthosis, for example, to stabilize the wrist would aid the person to push along the wheelchair. AT can also be alternative. And in this way, we would really replace or substitute um, an ability that is, is lost or missing. For example, a person who cannot speak intellig intelligible at all we can go to the techniques of augmentative or alternative communication um, and the person uses some type of communication aid. Or a person who is hearing impaired or completely deaf, instead of lip reading, we would move from the auditory channel to the visual channel and the person would use sign language. And we here we have reached an important point this presentation will not include assistive technology for people with um, visual impairments or hearing impairments, as these are really too specialized to be dealt with in this context. Perfect. You have told us um, what assistive technology is, what the, what the types are. And here in this slide, you can see that assistive technology is basically any aid that helps people who have specific problems in a specific area. And now I would like to know how are assistive technologies usually categorized? Well, we categorize them uh, basically in technically or not technically. Frequently, we have the misunderstanding that when you use assistive technology, it has to do with techniques or has to be digitalized. No, not at all. As Edwina said before, it's principally everything that increases participation for a person who has some type of disability. Um, 
A typical no-tech communication, no-tech assistive technology would be, for example, a communication board or a person only um, having the use of only one hand. He or she might use a card holder to be able to play cards with other persons or using adapted handles to manipulate kitchen aids. Yeah? So we have no digitalization at all, but it's still assistive technology. A typical example for low-tech assistive technology would be switches to manipulate anything that's battery powered. Or then, of course, we have the range of high-tech AT, for example, adapted hardware. I will later tell you about adapted keyboards, adapted mouse, um, mouses for keyboards, or uh, mice in this case, actually, it would be. Or software that can be accessed also by scanning or by eye gaze. So we do not have to use a keyboard when a person is not able to do so. Then mobility aids, which would be, for example, braces, orthosis, or exoskeletons, are fairly new techniques um, that enable persons with, um, for example, who are paralyzed with an exoskelet, the person might be able to stand up or even move along. Or any type of writing aids, this um, might be a no-tech, very simple pen holder. Actually, when I started my professional life and we had a pupil with severe motor impairments, we just would use a tennis ball and stick the pen inside and the child would be able to grip it. Um, or high-tech writing aid using computers. And then the big area of communication aids ranging from using no-techs at all to high-tech via computer and then aids to participate in sports and in musics, um, such important fields to facilitate inclusion. So principally, we have to ask ourselves, or the, it's a question actually, the person in need of assistive technology um, has to ask her himself, when, where, and how can I independently gain information and express myself to others? So it's also, it's always receiving information and also expressing ourselves to others. And when, where, and how can I move and act independently? And all this adds up to self-determination. Um, an intersection between a person and a machine may be necessary and there's now three um, possibilities when this is necessary. Either when a person cannot manipulate conventional input devices, for example, a conventional keyboard, a conventional mouse, switches, mobile phones, or remote controls, kitchen aids, toys. When a person is unable to use verbal speech or sign language to communicate with others, or big field when a person is unable to independently move around, manipulate devices and or access her or his environments. And this is one example of a video that we invite you to watch, to dig in um, in greater depth. Um, within this presentation, we do not have the time to show you the videos, but you have the link.